So big history is uh, different than uh, a traditional uh, a U.S. history or traditional Western Civ or traditional world history. One of the things that big history does is when you answer a question at a particular time and space scale, then big history says, what if you took it up another scale? Here's a really good example. I drink coffee every single morning. Well, big history causes me to ask the question, how did that coffee arrive in that coffee mug? Where did the origin of coffee come from? Why is it that people around the world um, drink coffee? I would discover that prior to about 800 CE, people didn't drink coffee. The first coffee drinkers were in Ethiopia. Uh, the Turks um, and the Arabs and the Muslims began to uh, uh, adopt the coffee drinking. The story is that the Dutch East India Company um, saw coffee as a great commodity to trade. Unfortunately, they didn't have coffee beans. And so they smuggled coffee beans out of the Middle East um, and then planted them in places where they thought they would grow. The Dutch East India Company was, um, by this point, everywhere in the world. So coffee now is grown on five different continents where it originated only on one. As people began to move to cities, no longer were they working in the farms where the, they would work from sunup till sundown. Now factories in cities were staying open round the clock. So development of coffee became connected to uh, the workplace. Um, it wasn't unusual for factories to say, we'll work three, four hours and then we'll give you a break. What kind of break? A coffee break. Coffee is a very bitter drink, uh, not typical to the kind of things that were in the diet of, uh, for example, Europeans or Americans. So they needed something to sweeten up the coffee. Hence, sugar became incredibly important in sustaining coffee. So then that connects us to the sugar plantations, and hence we're now connected to even the slave trade. Of course, that doesn't quite get me to the really big, big historical question. The big historian says, how did the coffee beans arrive in Ethiopia? Now this gets me back to a whole set of questions about the formation of soil, the formation of the earth, the formation of the solar system. You know, why is it that coffee grows best between the two tropics? Why doesn't it grow in Ann Arbor, Michigan? To pose those kinds of questions, now I'm into a range of geology, of solar systems, of, of physics. So what big history does is it could start with something as small as how did that coffee get into my cup? And then it moves me around the globe, around time and space in multiple ways.